going on YouTube? My name is Zach Centrum and welcome to the channel. First, sorry about the echo. The next few videos are all going to be in the garage, so bear with me. I know the echo's bad. I can't fix it. It's windy, sprinkling, and everything outside, so can't really do much of that. Now, I'm coming at you with an actual video series. Uh, I've got a lot of things I'm doing to the car. It is actually Saturday at about 9 a.m., and this car has to be done by the 6th, which is a week from today, at about 10 a.m. So I have a full seven days to get everything done to the car. Now, here is a rough list of things that are going. I've already rubbed some of it. I've got to build a splitter, build an ABS brake line cover, install all my Mishipoto, Mishimoto parts, full change front end, Car's getting a full wrap, chrome delete, roof's going black, headlights are getting tinted, wheels are getting wrapped, painting the calipers, uh, I have floor mats that are coming in, and then some splash guards, some other stuff that I gotta buy. So, uh, not all of the videos are gonna be full DIY. Some of them, I'm gonna have video specific installs. Uh, for instance, my Mishimoto parts, maybe the caliper paint. Um, what else we got over there that I want to do? I want to do a Chrome delete video. So there's a few things that will be specific videos. Uh, other than that, I think I'm going to try to daily vlog, maybe not make it really boring. If I can find a way to edit it and make it entertaining to show you at least the progress of the vehicle for these seven days, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so it's going to be a little tricky because I'm on a tight time crunch a week. Plus I work 50, 60 hours a week at my day job and I got to get all this stuff done so recording for YouTube is going to be difficult we'll say because I have to set up the camera record make sure that it's doing what it's doing set up a time-lapse if I'm gonna do that and then I have to work so it takes me away from just working on the car so we'll see hopefully I can get this done I really want to bring all of this to you guys on YouTube for all of you who are following my car who appreciate it and I want to show you the whole wrap process. And today, um, I don't know if you can tell the car's not as wet as it was. I just got done washing the car. So full wrap, I need to wash the car completely. Now it's disassemble time. And then I'll go over the process after the car is disassembled and we're gonna start laying the first vinyl. But I wanna get the wrap done first before everything else. Everything else is kind of minor and Excuse me, everything else is kind of minor and I can take it to the show without those things actually done, but the wrap can't be late. Like I can't take the car partially wrapped. So wraps first and foremost, and we're gonna start tearing this car apart. So in this video, I'll probably have bumper removal. I'll have the handle removals. Um, cars getting jacked up, wheels are coming off. Calipers are probably coming off to get ready for paint. Uh, rear bumper, uh, tail lights, headlights, those things. So I'll try to get a little specific on this. This video is probably going to be titled uh, Chrysler 300 Disassemble for Wrap. That actually is probably a good title. So bear with me, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this car jacked up, start showing you guys some things, and we'll make the best of it, guys. All right, so while Craig's breaking loose that side over here, I'm going to show you guys where I put the jack stand. So, this right here is part of the frame rail. Oh, see how low I can get down here. All right, so you can see I just used this tall jack stand and hooked it up on the frame. Now, where I actually put the jack is in here, part of the frame rail itself. So I don't trust pinch welds and everyone else who decides to jack up on those areas. And let's get back here, show you guys where I placed this rear jack stand. All right, so if you get in there, you can see it's actually part of the subframe. That is where this jack stand is. And the reason I jacked everything up from the front is because I don't like any of the spots back here to actually put a jack on these cars so 
I do it that way. There could be a better way if you do it different. Doesn't mean you're wrong, doesn't mean I'm right. Preference. So of course the wicker bill needs to come off. Which mine are with supplied Allen heads. All right, so while Craig is taking off the wicker bill, I'm gonna start on the front bumper. Now, my front bumper is gonna be a little bit more of a pain in the ass to take off than most because my front splitter is uh, literally mounted to everything. You see how many bolts are under this thing? That's still a lot of soapy water under here. Wonderful. Love rolling around in water. So. I'll show you guys, basically, there's three push, uh, they're not pins, they're push mechanisms in there. You'll need to take these out, which, again, let me get the flashlight. Did you take, oh. So, you'll need to take these push pins out because behind this, uh, I don't know if you can see it through there. Right through there, there's a 10 millimeter that needs to be taken out. So, all that. And pop the hood and show you guys the rest. All of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait. Yes. Eight. You have eight of these push pins that need to come out. And then there's little pressure clamps here as well, same as right here. So let me go ahead and get started on that, guys, and catch you guys up in a second. Okay, so quick tip, guys. If you don't have one of these to take off interior panels, any kind of body panels, anything, this thing is super, super, super helpful. This one damn tool right here is amazing. So... I'll put the link up in the description below for one of these where I got mine. Amazon. Get everything on Amazon, guys. Alright, guys. So, if you don't have one of these or one of these to use, you can use two flatheads. So, come over here. You should get on each side of it. And like I said, this is the one that was giving me trouble. There you go. So, you can use two flatheads if you don't want to go buy this kit. You can do that. If not... This thing works, this works, personal preference. You do whatever works for you. But regardless, just, you gotta take all eight of these out. And, you know, just kind of a pain. Some might be really seized up from dirt and all sorts of other sh stuff. <laughs> but anyways, all right, I'll show you guys. You do the same process on these three down here. So another helpful hint, get you a lot of sandwich bags, Ziploc bags, whatever you want, but see, wicker bill, keep everything together guys when you're taking your car apart. Front bumper, Craig just made one for the rear bumper, tail lights. Keep everything together no matter how fast or slow you're taking your car apart, putting it back together. You're going to want to make sure you group all these because things will get mixed up and it makes for a pain in the ass during reassemble. All right, so Craig has started removing everything to get this ready back here. So first thing you gotta do is take these lights out. And then this is just pushed in, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So this little guy right here, you just pull up and take out. This is a Torx, same thing. So with this, you go from up here. I wasn't back here doing it, so you pull that back, do that, unplug it. You got a screw, which is actually, it screws out and it's just a body panel clip. And then you've got these two pieces down here. So once you have that, you can pull this back. I'm doing it with one hand, but this whole panel comes off. And is this just pressure? You just pull it up? All right, will you pull that up? So once you just pull it directly straight up correct towards you up in the and you see so 
So you see it's got these little pressure pins, which are these, and then you've got these out here. So what you do is you pull towards the front of the car and then up completely. So once that's out, get that out of here, you can pull this back get around there. And then you can see there's a wing nut and you can see there's another one right there and there's one up there. So you have three, one, two and three wing nuts. You screw those out, unplug it, good to go. Right, so I'll let him go ahead and finish up because he doesn't like to be on camera. D Craig? Not really. Not really. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I've taken off all these panels and the 10 millimeter back here, don't forget that. So like I said, these are just pressured in, which is terrifying to take out. So, that's open. There you go. So come show this trick. So you'll see there's these three spots and there's just little pressure spots. So you gotta pull it apart and just do your best not to break them. But it's kind of a pain. You saw how much pressure I had to put. So same thing goes over here. We're just going to one more. One more. Come on. There we go. So, all right, so now my splitter is attached to the splash guard, of course. Don't do what I just did. Unplug this. There's a harness right here for all of your, for all of your park sensors. If you have the park sensors, if you don't, you may or may not have this plug. I don't know. This could be tied in. No, it has fog lights. So you're going to want to unplug this as well. So I'll do that. But that's basically how you take it off. You have push pins, 10 millimeter push pins. These are clamped in right here. You'll see I have one, it's the same design. It's a push pin, same as these, that's pushed in right here into the fender. There's a little plastic piece right here. That, and then you have all eight of these push pins. And that's basically what holds it on. Now, my splitter, is tied into my splash guard. So if not, you'll see all of these 10 millimeters or they might be eight millimeters. I would have to see I, they're under my splitter. But you need to take all those off to separate your splash guard from your bumper itself. But in my case, it's all tied together. So that's as simple as it is for taking your bumper off. It's actually fairly simple compared to other bumpers. All right, so now that all that's unplugged, this bumper is done, ready to get moved out of the way. Headlights are super simple. Headlight is one 10 millimeter, two 10 millimeter, then three and four. That's all you got, and then there's a plug on the back. Same on this side. So let's go show you where Craig is on the tail lights at the moment. So this one is completely out. There's literally one main harness that goes into it. So all this has been disassembled and, oh, I thought you needed me for something. Does it not need me? To do the bumper, rear bumper. Okay. You can plug this for your motion sensors. Ah, okay. And then it's a... So this needs to be unplugged. Make sure you take that off or you can slide it away from the bumper and unplug it. But regardless, it does need to be unplugged because this is going to the harness in the car. This harness is tied in similar to the one on the front bumper. So we will get to... You know these pins? All right, same thing as the front one. Yeah. You're gonna have these pins, which you can't see. And then there's a 10 millimeter here. Let me see, hold on. Get the old handy dandy flashlight. So, all right. You got pin here, pin here. And right up under here is a 10 millimeter. Okay, so the exact same setup as, you're not gonna be able to see it. You're gonna have no. to pull that away to get to the 10 millimeter. So the exact same setup that was on the front. You have pins, it 10 pops millimeter. Out just like the front. All right. Along here. So again, exact same setup. We'll show you after we pulled that out. Here is the same way as the sides. It just pops out like the front. Same thing on the other side. Same thing on the other side. Is there anything on the bottom? Yes. 
Okay. So once we get to that point, we'll hop up under here and actually let's go ahead and take a look. So again, um, pin, 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 then another pin, and then you can see the 10 millimeter right there as well. So that should be what ties the bottom together. And then, all right, so I'm gonna let Craig take over and do this. I'm gonna go finish up this front end. All right guys, correction on the headlights. I assumed they were 10. They are actually eights, which, let me see if I, oh, doesn't matter. It's eight millimeter, so I, uh, my bad. Well right, guys, you know you're working on a car when there's uh, blood involved. So, FYI, when you're using a pick, they're sharp. These little guys are sharp, so don't stab yourself. Right, right Craig? Yes. All right. Don't do that. Caution. Don't stab yourself. So, update on the car. Now, when I purchased the car, we'll do this. So when I purchased the car, I had a clean Carfax. You usually don't question it when it has a clean Carfax, so, especially since it was a leased car. Now, tearing it apart, as you know with buying any used car, you always find hidden stuff, whether it be electrical, body, whatever it is. So guess what happened? We found stuff. So let me show you guys one thing I knew of, which I had already ordered. Um, I'll just show you. So this was my wheel well on the passenger side. So it goes in the car like this. And it's just wanting to roll up. All right. So this was the wheel well. Now, clearly, this wheel well is not factory. I mean, look at it. So I'll show you what the 300 is supposed to look like. Now, you can see that this has like insulation, the mold is better, everything. Well, at least I hope you can tell because I don't have a light. Now, I had already ordered a new wheel well. This flash guard, I actually already knew about, was torn off. And the car has no mid guard, mid engine guard. Why do I not have my flashlight? There it is, again. So the car has no mid guard as well. So I have, they're up there. I have a new splash guard, new mid guard, new wheel well, which is in the office. Now this is something I was not ready for. This is not supposed to be like this. So this is part of the core support where the headlights bolt into, and it's supposed to have a bar right here going up as well for support. Now, you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> so clearly, bar, fender supported, everything is tied together and braced correctly. Um, now, as far as, that just takes all the structural parts out of this and as you can see actually this fender I guess moves and has been rubbing on the headlight so we already have another one of these ordered it's supposed to be here on the fourth the fourth puts me at Thursday I need the car ready by the sixth so I should be able to get at least everything else done and when that gets in I can swap that over throw the front bumper on and we should be good to go. Now, again, man, buying used cars, you never know what happened, what someone did, what they replaced, what they didn't, what they claimed. You never know when you buy a used car. So, structurally, everything on the car is good, but when you start tearing things down, man, you find stuff like that. Now, could I have left it like that? Yeah, I've had the car for 16,000 miles and it's never been an issue. Now, if I have something torn apart, me personally, I replace stuff. If I find something broken, if it's, we'll say a wheel hub, I replace both sides. You know, you just go through and me personally, I replace things if I know that they need to be or some kind of preventive maintenance or clearly if it's broken. Now, other people, shops, other owners before they sell cars, they don't do that. Now, you know, it is what it is, guys. Um, Parts ordered. I thought about whether I was gonna show this on YouTube, but 
this is what happens when you buy cars. This is what happens when you mod cars. This is what happens when you start tearing things apart. Sometimes you get an owner that completely takes care of everything. Sometimes you don't. You never know. You never know what kind of gremlins the car has until you get into it. So I'm sharing real world experience with you guys. Um, car will be better than it was before once I have everything on. And a lot of it's not seen. The splash guard, the mid guard, this core support, all that's not seen. None of y'all ever see this. I never saw it. So it's not gonna change anything, but it's gonna make me feel better about the car in general. So let me go ahead and get back to tearing some stuff apart. Um, I think he's pretty close to, yeah. So he's already got everything done. Pins are out. Um, so we'll see. Uh, he's pretty close to that. If he quit stabbing himself and hurting himself, it'd be great. I hope you guys are enjoying this, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my best to make this uh, not just a DIY, and there's a lot of information all in this one video. I've seen videos that's just taking the bumper off, or just taking the mirrors off, or you know, just taking, you know, whatever. And I'm trying to do a full car disassemble in one video without completely just killing you guys with information or just boring you to death. So I hope, <laughs> I hope it's working. Um, this video series is gonna get a lot better once the disassemble's done. I can actually start showing you guys the fun stuff. But to get to the fun stuff, you gotta do this kind of stuff. Hey, this is what it is, guys. Um, so let me go ahead and get back to work. I'll quit talking to you guys. Where's the Craig's back? He's done yawning. Done bleeding. We super glued it. Oh, FYI, some people may not agree, but where is it? Right That's the whole point, see? Perfect. I was not even focusing. But super glue, super glue works great on cuts. I don't care what anyone says. All right, so Craig, you gonna do this while I record you this time? Yeah. All right, so same thing, guys. It's terrifying, makes a lot of noise. This one clearly has much, much more than the front one. So just take your time. We've done this before, so uh, it's gonna be really intimidating your first go around, but. Uh, all right, well, minor. <laughs> Uno momento, por favor. <laughs> okay, well. Uno momento. Um, we'll be to be continued as we figure out why this is not coming off. All right, so everything else is loose, bottom. All right, so to be continued, guys. Mm -hmm. Once I get it started, it'll, it'll go. See, and this is why I don't do DIY videos. <laughs> You're like, oh, retake. Retake one, two, whatever. All right. Well, we either broke it or it's coming off. One of the two. There we go. All right, so we'll show you how this goes. So this is... The exact same setup, guys. Um, it's got these same pressure clips that all slide into. You see these little notches? Bink, bink, bink. So that is literally how most all this, the front that I showed you, they're all just pressured. So as you just saw, it's a little intimidating when you go to pull on something and it doesn't want to cooperate and you think you're going to break something. But just be careful. Um, and let's say disclaimer, if you break anything on your car after watching this video, I am not a professional and I am not responsible for the damages that you may or may not cause on your vehicle That's right. because Craig's not certified either. No. So, <laughs> um, all right, so check this out guys. Uh, we've got front bumper off, rear bumper off, headlights out. Um, uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and tackle these handles real quick. Handles are actually super simple. All right, so we're getting this third brake light out. To do that, there are, what? This is also a handy dandy tool. Let me see a tool. So this thing right here, clamp it, yeah. So you slide that under, here, do it real quick. Oh, let's see, stupid lighting. So yeah, you slide it under, pop it, don't shoot that thing at me. Yeah, so you squeeze it, bam, done. Magic, that tool is amazing when it works on the certain clamps. So you got a handful of these, another one right here. Right here, right over there, and then on this little handle, you have, it's a Torx, and it's a 20 Torx, T20. 
So we'll take that off. Once he gets all that done, I'll show you guys how to take the third brake off. So you have a 10 millimeter here, and you already got this 10 millimeter on this side off. Then you'll have these plugs. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and knock that 10 millimeter out. As you can see, it doesn't take much. Now, can I get all this? All right. So, we've got a little pin right here. I know it's gonna be dark, I'm gonna see. But I need, this might work. I hate taking, come on. Un momento. Yeah, un momento. Well, that one's easy. That. This one. Another one. This one's always the fun one. And. If I can get it. So if you see, guys, it's got this little pin. Right there. Right there. So if I can get that. Right away, little shit. Hello. See, easy as cake. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So, this is actually a pain to take out just because of that one plug. But other than that, it's pretty simple. You've got just a bunch of stuff to take out just to get to it. But other than that, you're good to go. Make sure you keep this safe. <laughs> Don't know what those call since they have cameras and all sorts of nonsense in it. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to take the door handle off. So when you open up, there's a little plastic or rubber grommet, which you can literally just pull out. Now, inside, you're not gonna be able to see, but it's a, if you look in there, it's a 20 Torx, same as the rear. You're going to loosen it, loosing, <laughs> loosen. Yeah. So counterclockwise <clears throat> and Come over here. So, as I'm loosening it, you can see this is getting loose. Loosen it to the point where that literally just comes out. So, don't drop it when you take it out, like I did. And then this, I retighten it back so it seems like this comes out easier. But that's personal preference. So, just pull it towards you and so come off. Why is it every time I try to record something? It just doesn't want to cooperate. Yeah, that's gross. Murphy's Law. Huh? Murphy's Law. Yeah. So actually, what can I, wrong with exactly. It just was wedged in there just perfectly. So this little rubber grommet goes around there. Take that off. Now, oh, cool. Mine is, all right, so be careful when you take that out. These will tend to break, but you do this, same thing, you, same thing as all the other ones, you unplug it, and if you look, you have to come over here, I don't, there's not enough light. You'll see these grooves. There is a little plastic, so I wish I had, I'm gonna show you guys this because this is important. Where is the plastic? All right. Yes. So, if you look in there, you'll see that there's little slider tabs that this can go on. And you put this and you slide it on so that you don't lose that. Because if that falls in the door, the only way to get that back yeah, is to take the door panel off. Good luck. So, that's as simple as this is. Let me show you the rear real quick. I won't talk as much during this one so we can just knock it out. This one's a little different though. So this one's gonna be behind the weather stripping. So you're gonna find, can you see that tab? So you're just gonna pull this weather stripping off that so you can get to it. Then there's a sticker. If you have nails, it's really helpful. 
If you don't, then find somebody with nails. Because this is a really good sticker. All right, so I like to leave it on there as much as I can. Same thing, counterclockwise. It literally just comes out and see if you can get in there. Can you see this metal bar in the video? Maybe let it focus. Kind of. So really. as you're, so not important then. Okay. But this is what actually moves and locks it in place whenever you're moving that. So again, pull this towards you. All right. That slides out. This one doesn't have a sensor on it because it's not pressure sensitive. It doesn't have the button for that. And take this off and you're good to go. And FYI, make sure all your windows are down so that you can get in and out of your car because if you don't have handles, these bars and stuff, or they're actually levers, are a pain. So I actually need to go in there and roll my windows down. So if you're taking all four handles off, make sure all the windows are down so that you can reach in and unlock or open your car because that just seems like a really bad situation to be in. Okay guys, so that concludes the disassemble. Uh, we've done handles, bumpers, um, all the lights, front and rear. Now, I'm going to do the calipers on, the disassemble of the calipers on their own designated video for paint. Um, that's also gonna be something that, if I have time to get to whenever uh, I mean, we're, we're on a crunch time. So wrap is first, calipers are a close second, but the weather has to be correct for me to paint these outside as well. Right now it's too humid and too chilly. Um, so now we gotta clean up all this nonsense and we'll probably start laying vinyl today, but this is gonna conclude the disassemble. Uh, if you want more detailed step-by-step, -step, complete DIY of any of these things, comment down below, DM me on Instagram, and I will do a full video of that. Uh, for time's sake, I couldn't do that today. I would do a quick video of all these all together. Um, if you like this video, subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit the bell for notifications. This is going to be a series because next is wrap, next is you know chrome delete, we got the roof, we got the calipers, we've got uh, some other miscellaneous stuff that I need to do. I still need to take the grill and stuff out of the bumper. Um, so there's going to be, I'm going to try to almost daily vlog this as far as what progress is done day by day. So stay tuned. The car is going to be, the car is going to look good. Wait until you see the color. Um, Won't be pretty. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm stoked. It's, the color is nice. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the color. So stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram, Zach Stenstrom, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See you in the next video.